Okay, so I am reporting. All right. So section 6.3 um, equations involving multiple angles. Let's just go drop all the way down to page 308, 308. And then on this page, we have loads of equations to solve. Okay. Um, I am going to walk through several of these in time permitting. Uh, it would be wise to probably get these solutions written down, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, especially um, in light of the fact that the way I work them out is just a slightly different than the way your author works them out. Well, the more reason why it might be wise to get down my solution method. All right, so problem number two, we'll look at this one first. They want us to solve for the sine of two theta equal to negative square root of three over two, where they indicate to us that theta is to range between 360 degrees and zero degrees. Okay. So this is the equation that we want to solve for. Notice, unfortunately, our argument of our sine function is a multiple angle argument. It's not just theta, but it's two theta. What's a little bit, what's even more disconcerting is the fact that if I was to replace sine two theta with its double angle identity equivalent form, of two sine theta cosine theta, that would make this problem even more miserable. You see that there? Replacing sine two theta with this would make the problem even more complicated to deal with. How do we solve something like this? All right, very difficult, okay? So what we're going to do here in order to solve for theta, all of our solutions that must be on this interval, is we need to realize that if theta lies between zero and 360, then two theta has to lie on this expanded interval, which is to say two times 360, which is 720 degrees to two times zero degrees or zero degrees. So two theta, the argument of this sine function must lie between zero and 720 degrees. So we'll keep this in mind. <clears throat> now, since the sine of this angle is a negative, since the sine of that angle, ladies and gentlemen, is a negative, our uh, solutions are going to come from what quadrants if the sine is a negative ratio? Anybody? What quadrants would our solutions come from? We've got a negative ratio here. Three and four. Okay, quadrants three and four. So we're gonna have one third, we're gonna have a third, third quadrant possibility down here. And specifically, what angle uh, in the third quadrant will have a sine value of negative square root of three over two? Well, when I see square root of three over two, I'm thinking 30, 60, 90 triangle. And we know that the sine of what acute angle gives us square root of three over two of the 30, 60, 90 triangle. Well, that's probably gonna be 60 degrees, correct? So therefore we'll use a 60 degree reference angle to derive our third quadrant angle which is 180 degrees plus 60 degrees or 240 degrees. So ladies and gentlemen, if two theta here is equal to 240 degrees, if two theta is equal to 240 degrees, then the sine of 240 degrees would be negative square root of three over two. But that's not the only case. 
you also indicated that we could have a solution that comes from quadrant four. And we will use a 60 degree angle as a reference angle. So what would this angle be here to here, our fourth quadrant angle? Well, all the way around is 360 degrees minus 60 degrees would yield our fourth quadrant angle. So this fourth quadrant angle is 360 degrees minus 60 degrees, which is 300 degrees. So therefore, um, if two theta is equal to 300 degrees, then the sine of 300 degrees would be also negative square root of three over two. But look at, this is something we need to remember now. Today, things are a little bit different because ladies and gentlemen, the argument of the sine function is two theta, not theta. So our solutions two theta can range from zero degrees to 720 degrees. So my point of this is this, one solution in the third quadrant is 240 degrees. But another solution in the third quadrant, which is coterminal to 240 degrees, would be saying that if two theta is equal to 240 degrees plus one trip around the unit circle, 360 degrees. Well, what's 240 degrees plus 360 degrees? Six hundred degrees. Six hundred degrees. Now, so two hundred and forty degrees is one possibility that two theta could be equal to, such that the sine would give us negative square root of three over two. But we've seen that we could also go around one whole time, three hundred sixty degrees, and then add another two hundred forty degrees to bring us to six hundred degrees. So two theta could be equal to 600 degrees and notice 600 degrees lies between zero and 720 degrees. So the sine of 600 degrees is also a negative square root of three over two. <clears throat> could I go around twice and then add 240 degrees? If I go around once, that's 360 degrees. If I go around another time, that's 720 degrees. But 720 degrees plus 240 degrees, ladies and gentlemen, would exceed the fact that two theta cannot be any larger than 720 degrees. Therefore, two theta can only be equal to 240 degrees or 600 degrees for a third quadrant possibilities. All right, now, so what we have concluded from here is that we said that two theta could be equal to 240 degrees or two theta could be equal to 600 degrees. All right, let's come over here. Our fourth quadrant possible solution to this equation we argued is 300 degrees. But what if we went around one whole time, 360 degrees plus another 300 degrees, we would be coterminal to our 300 degree angle. So another possibility is that two theta could be equal to 360 degrees plus 300 degrees. Or that's to say two theta could be equal to 660 degrees. And notice 660 degrees is less than or equal to 720 degrees and falls in this interval here. But notice we could not go around twice, 360 plus 360, 720, and then add another 300 degrees to 720 degrees, that would give us an angle outside of this interval. So as far as our fourth quadrant possibilities are concerned, um, we've discovered that two theta could be equal to 300 degrees, or two theta could be equal to 660 degrees. But ladies and gentlemen, we were not asked to solve for two theta. We were being asked to solve for theta. 
and theta lies on the smaller interval, zero to 360. So although two theta could be equal to 240 degrees or 600 degrees or 300 degrees or 660 degrees, we have, not, we have to recover theta now. So what we have to do here is we have to divide both sides of these equations by two. That would imply that one solution to our trig equation that says that theta would be 240 degrees divided by two, which is 120 degrees. Likewise, to solve for theta here, we divide by two, which implies that another solution to this trig equation is 600 degrees divided by two or 300 degrees. Likewise, divide by two, which implies then that another solution is theta for theta would be 300 degrees divided by two, which is 150 degrees. Divide by two. So another solution for theta would be 660 degrees divided by two, which is 330 degrees. And so ladies and gentlemen, what are our solutions to this trig equation? Here's your answers. Theta could be equal to 120 degrees, 150 degrees, 300 degrees or 330 degrees. And we're done with that problem. These ladies and gentlemen would be your solutions to problem number two. Okay. So do you Go ahead, question. You, you started coming through okay, but then you broke out. Okay. So do you do you always start to do you always divide by two? To get the okay. final. <clears throat> Let's recap what happened here. Because the argument of the sine function is two theta, we need to realize that the arguments of the sine function, okay, come from this larger interval that is between zero and seven twenty. So we have to double this interval for theta because our argument is doubled. Oh, okay. you see that? So two, yeah. theta, two theta can lie in this larger interval here, zero to 720. And we discovered therefore that if two theta is equal to 240 degrees, right? The sine of 240 degrees is negative square root of three over two, but two theta has more latitude. I mean, it can be larger than 360 degrees. So. 2 theta could be 240 degrees, or 2 theta could be 360 degrees plus what? 240 degrees. 600 degrees could also be a value for 2 theta. And do you agree that 600 degrees lies on this larger interval for 2 theta? And the sine of 600 degrees, because 600 degrees is coterminal with 240 degrees, would also be negative square root of 3 over 2. Now you could not go around twice and then add three, uh, 240 degrees uh, because once around is 360, twice around is 720 and 720 plus 240, what's 720 degrees plus 240? Well, that gives you 960 degrees, but 960 degrees exceeds this range, do you agree, for two theta? That makes sense? Yeah, it makes sense. So you can't go around twice and add 240 degrees. Although 960 degrees is coterminal or 240 degrees, 960 degrees does not lie between zero and 720 degrees that two theta has to lie between. Does that help clarify things a little bit there? <clears throat> so therefore, for our third quadrant possible angles that lie in this interval here, zero to 720, two theta could be equal to 240 degrees or 600 degrees. But we're not asked to solve for two theta, we're asked to solve for theta. So in the end, we have to divide both sides of these equations by two to recover theta. Theta would be 120 degrees. Theta would be 300 degrees, okay? Likewise, for our fourth quadrant possible solutions, we said that if two theta is equal to 300 degrees, right? 300 degrees is the fourth quadrant angle the sine of 300 degrees would be negative square root of three over two. But ladies and gentlemen, 
There's another possible angle in the fourth quadrant whose sine is negative square root of three over two, not just 300 degrees. <clears throat> but we could go around one whole time, 360 degrees plus another 300 degrees, which brings us coterminally back to the 300 degree angle. So 360 degrees plus 300 degrees more is 660 degrees that two theta could possibly be. And notice since two theta can range from zero to 720 degrees, 660 degrees falls in this interval. For that reason, two theta could also be 660 degrees. Now we could not go around twice, 360 plus another 360 is 720 plus another 300. 720 degrees plus 300 degrees would be uh, 1020 degrees, but 1020 degrees does not lie between zero and 720 for two theta. You see that there? So we have to stop in going around one whole time and adding 300 degrees for our fourth quadrant possibility for two theta. So the largest two theta could be would be 660 degrees. So to recover theta though, we have to divide both sides of these equations by two. So theta could also be equal to 150 or theta could also be equal to 330 and we're done. So these are the solutions again to problem number two. Having gone over it twice, does that help out? If you had any confusion, anybody, does that help out? Yeah, it does. Okay. <clears throat> Let's try to solve another one. So that's number two in section 6.3. Um, okay, let's see. Okay, well, maybe we can do one like number uh, four. The cotangent of two theta is equal to one. They want you to solve for theta such that the cotangent of two theta is equal to one. Again, theta, our solutions theta range between 360 degrees and zero degrees. But ladies and gentlemen, the argument of this cotangent function is two theta. <clears throat> theta. So instead of using an identity to replace this double angle for cotangent with its messy equivalent form, an easier way to do this problem is to realize that if theta ranges from 0 to 360, then 2 theta, the argument of this cotangent function would range from 0 degrees to how many degrees? <clears throat> 2 times 360 is what? 720 degrees, everybody see that there? So first of all, we widen the interval out here for the argument of the cotangent function, zero to 720 degrees. All right, okay. <clears throat> now, what quadrants, since the cotangent of this, this angle here is gonna give you a positive one ratio, what quadrants would our solutions come from? Anybody? In what quadrants is the cotangent positive? Remember, remember the cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent. So what quadrants would our solutions come from? Cotangent, remember, is like your x over your y. It's the ratio of x over y. So for it to be positive, both x and y have to have the same signs. So that restricts us to quadrants one and what? Three. One and three. So one and three. <clears throat> okay. But ladies and gentlemen, the cotangent of what angle in quadrant one would give you a ratio of one? Well, since the cotangent is reciprocal of tangent, the tangent of what first quadrant angle would give you one? The tangent of what first quadrant would give you one? First quadrant angle would give you one. You could use your uh, unit circle. Um, uh, what ordered pair around the unit circle in the first quadrant has the same X and Y coordinates? What angle is do you that? Want, do you want degrees? Uh, yes, degrees. 45 degrees. 45 degrees. 
So that one, not only is the tangent of 45 degrees one, but the cotangent of 45 degrees is one. And again, to determine that you would use your unit circle, okay? And you would search for an ordered pair on the unit circle in the first quadrant that has the same X and Y coordinates, right? Because remember cotangent is the ratio, whoops, cotangent of an angle is a ratio of X over Y. So to get a ratio of one, both the X and the Y coordinates have to be the same, right? So 45 degrees. So therefore two theta, our argument two theta could be equal to 45 degrees for our quadrant one possibility. But is that it, Lezaman? Is that the only quadrant one possibility recalling the fact that two theta could lie between zero and 720 degrees? Could there be other angles in quadrant one coterminal to 45 degrees for two theta such that we are in this larger interval now, zero to 720? Yes, and that would be 405 degrees. You could go around one whole time, right? Which is 360 degrees. 360 degrees plus 45 degrees brings us coterminally right back to 45 degrees. So my point is, is that two theta here could conceivably be 360 degrees plus 45 degrees, which is to say it could be 205 degrees also. And notice 205 degrees lies between zero and 720 degrees. Could we, ladies and gentlemen, go around twice? Go around once, which is 360, go around another time, which is 720, and then 720 plus 45 degrees. Would that lie in this interval here? 720 plus 45 degrees? The answer is no. 720 degrees plus 45 degrees, although it's coterminal to 45 degrees, cannot be a, a value for two theta because it exceeds this range of values that two theta can assume. Because 720 degrees plus 45 degrees is greater than 720 degrees. I hate to interrupt, but isn't it uh, 405 instead of 205? Why am I? What do I got here? The oh, three, 360, 405. Yeah. Yeah, my bad. But you agree I cannot go around twice? 360 plus 367, 20, 720 plus 45 would be too large for this interval for two theta? Yeah, it's too large. So we, we got to stop there, okay? So as far as our quadrant one possible solutions to this trig equation are concerned, two theta could be equal to 45 degrees or two theta could be equal to 405 degrees. All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as far as our uh, quadrant three possible solutions are concerned, the cotangent of what quadrant three angle would give you a ratio of positive one? Well, we've seen that in the first quadrant, the 45 degree angle was the angle in the first quadrant. So we could use 45 degrees as a reference angle to derive our third quadrant angle. So our third quadrant angle is going to be uh, 180 degrees plus 45 degrees, which hopefully I'll get this right, 225 degrees, right? So quadrant three angle would be 225 degrees. So two theta, if it's equal to 225 degrees, the cosine of 225 degrees would be positive one. But ladies and gentlemen, two theta can lie in this larger interval from zero to 720 degrees. So could there be another possible third quadrant angle whose cotangent is one? The answer is yes. We could go around one whole time, 360 degrees, and then we could add to 360 degrees, 225 degrees. That'll bring us coterminally right back to the 45 excuse me, coterminally, right back to the 225 degree angle. So another possible third quadrant angle that two theta could be equal to would be 360 degrees plus 225 degrees. Which would give us 585 degrees, right?
Could we go around three times and add 225 degrees to have another possible value for two theta? The answer is no, because once around is 360, twice around is 720, but 720 degrees plus 225 degrees, although it's coterminal to 225 degrees, does not lie in this interval because 720 degrees plus 225 degrees is greater than uh, the allowable maximum value in this interval, which is 720 degrees. So we can't go around twice. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, for this trigonometric equation here, if two theta is equal to 45 degrees or if two theta is equal to 405 degrees, the cotangent would be one. These are your first quadrant possibilities. Or your third quadrant possibilities. If two theta is equal to 225 degrees or if two theta is equal to 585 degrees, the cotangent of those angles would be positive one. Those are your third quadrant possibilities. But this is something we got to remember in the end, ladies and gentlemen. We're not being asked to solve for two theta. We're being asked to solve for theta. So in the end, you have to recover the solutions theta. So how do I solve for theta here? How do I recover what theta would be if two theta could be 45 degrees? We would divide by two here. So if two theta could be 45 degrees, then theta could be equal to what? What's 45 divided by two? I believe that gives you 22.5 degrees. That would be one solution to our trig equation, 22.5 degrees. If two theta could be equal to 405 degrees, what would theta be equal to? Theta would be equal to 405 degrees divided by two. And what's 405 divided by two? Oh, is it two, zero, two, 0.5 degrees, did I get that right? 202.5 degrees. I believe that looks good. But ladies and gentlemen, if two theta could be equal to 225 degrees, this would imply that another solution or trig equation would be theta is 225 degrees divided by two, which would be one, one, two, point five degrees, correct? Or if two theta is equal to 585 degrees, this would imply that another solution or trig equation is theta could be equal to 585 degrees divided by two. Which is to say 290, 2.5 degrees. And we're done. So our solutions to this trigonometric equation, cotangent two theta equal to one, where theta is restricted be to be to between zero and 360, our solutions would be 22.5 degrees. Or we could have what, 112.5 degrees. Or we could have 202.5 degrees or we could have 292.5 degrees. These are your solutions to problem number four. Okay. Is this making an ounce of sense of what we're doing here this morning? Do you see how we have to widen our interval to include the values for the argument of the trig function? But in the end, we have to recover theta by dividing by two. See how these are working? All right. That was one like number four. Let's uh, see what other landmines await us. One like number six, ladies and gentlemen. They want us to solve for the sine of three theta is equal to negative one. Problem number six, sine of three theta is equal to negative one. We know our solution is theta will come from the interval from zero to 360 degrees. But ladies and gentlemen, that's not the argument of this sine function. The argument is three theta. 
That's why this section is entitled uh, trigonometric equations that have multiple angles. Okay, this is a multiple of the angle theta, three theta. So if theta lies between zero and 360, then three theta would lie on what expanded interval? What expanded interval will three theta lie on? Three times zero degrees is still zero degrees, but what's three times 360 degrees? Three times 360 degrees. Would be 1,080 degrees, you agree? So three theta lie, can uh, come from this larger interval here. Everybody see that there? We've got an expanded interval for three theta, the argument of our sine function in our trig equation here. All right, knowing that three theta could lie between zero or 1,080 degrees, in what quadrants would our solution come from, ladies and gentlemen? Or can you think of any um, maybe quadrantal angle whose sine is equal to negative one? Whose sine is negative one? Well, again, if you think of the unit circle here, and we know that the sine function is equivalent to the y coordinate of any point around the unit circle. The, the only point that has a y coordinate that is negative one would be down here. What angle is this down here in standard position? Got it. What angle would that be down here? That would be what is that? 270 degrees. 270 degrees. 270 degrees. <clears throat> So notice if the sine of, if, if, if the argument is 270 degrees, the sine of 270 degrees is negative one. So it's possible therefore that our argument of this trig function, which is three theta, three theta could be equal to 270 degrees. Do you agree? If three theta is equal to 270 degrees, then the sine of 270 degrees would be negative one. But ladies and gentlemen, is this it for three theta? Is this, this the largest value that three theta could assume, knowing that three theta lies on this expanded interval from zero to 1,080 degrees? Could we come up with another angle or another angles that are coterminal 270 degrees that also lie in this interval from zero to 1,080 degrees? I think we can come up with at least another one. Because what if I go around one whole time, ladies and gentlemen, that's 360 degrees. And if I add to 360 degrees, another 270 degrees, doesn't that coterminally bring me right back to the 270 degree angle? Whose sign would also be negative one? So my point is this, the argument of this sine function, three theta could also be equal to 360 degrees plus 270 degrees, which is coterminal to 270 degrees. So three theta could be equal to, what does this add up to? What's that, 13, 630, is that correct? Just double check my arithmetic always, just make sure I'm correct here. 13, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay. So 330, uh, th three theta rather, three theta could also be equal to 630 degrees. Do you agree that 630 degrees still lies in this interval? That three theta is restricted to? Is there another angle coterminal to 270 degrees, ladies and gentlemen? that would still lie in this interval zero to 1,080 degrees. In other words, could we go around twice and add 270 degrees and still be in this interval? Could we go around twice? 360 plus another 360 is 720. 720 plus 270 degrees is coterminal to 270 degrees but does it lie in this interval? So is 720 degrees plus 270 degrees, does it lie in this interval for three theta? Well, 720 plus 270 would give you, nine hundred ninety degrees. Does 990 degrees, ladies and gentlemen, lie between zero and 1,080 degrees? Is that the case? 990 degrees in this interval? 
Yes. So three theta could also be equal to two trips around the unit circle, two trips around plus 270 degrees. That's to say three theta could be 720 degrees plus 270 degrees, which gives us an angle of 990 degrees, 990 degrees being coterminal to 270 degrees. And therefore the sine of 990 degrees would also be negative one. Could we go around three, tri three times, ladies and gentlemen, and add 270 degrees and still be in this interval? You think that's gonna work three trips around plus 270? I think that's gonna to be too big because three trips around is 1,080 degrees. And if you add anything to 1,080 degrees, you're outside of this range. So you have to stop here. Two trips around plus 270 is as large of a angle you can get that is still coterminal to 270 degrees. That would still be in the center wall. So what, we, what have we discovered? We discovered that if three theta is 270 degrees or 630 degrees or 990 degrees, the sine of those angles would be equal to negative one. But ladies and gentlemen, we're not, asked, we're not being asked to solve for three theta. We're being asked to solve for theta. So in the end, we have to recover theta. So if three theta is equal to 270 degrees, this would imply then that theta would have to be 270 degrees divided by three. So one possible solution is 90 degrees. 90 degrees is one solution for theta. Or if three theta could be 630 degrees, this would imply then that theta could be equal to 630 degrees divided by three. Or theta could be what? 210 degrees? 210 degrees. There's another solution for this trig equation. Theta could be equal to 200, 210 degrees. Or three theta could be equal to 990 degrees. If that's the case, then that would imply then that theta could be 990 degrees divided by three, which gives us 330 degrees and we're done. So ladies and gentlemen, here's the solutions of this trig equation. Theta could be equal to 90 degrees, 210 degrees, or 330 degrees. And notice all these values for theta lie on the interval that theta is restricted to. Not free theta, but theta is restricted between 0 and 360. But notice all these lie in that interval between 0 and 360. Those are your solutions. Just making sense how we're solving uh, trigonometric equations that include multiple angles, my gentlemen, a multiple of an angle. Yeah, it makes sense. All right. <clears throat> And that was one like number six. Oh, let's see what else. Now, notice the um, convention in this textbook has been like, if, if theta is part of the argument of a trig function, then your answers are in degrees. But if X is part of your argument of a trig function, your answer should be in radians, okay? Although you can work with degrees to solve the equation, you need to make sure you convert all your answers back in the end to radians because that's how your author wants you to you know, uh, report those. Uh, let's try a problem like number 10 here. Let's try to solve this equation. The cosecant of 3x must be equal to 1. Number 10. Cosecant of 3x must be equal to 1. Notice they indicate that X is the lie on the interval from zero to two pi radians. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if X lies between zero and two pi radians, then the argument of this trig function, which is three X would lie on what expanded interval? Three X would lie between what and what? Anybody? Between what and what would three X lie? Zero and six pi. Zero and six pi radians, this expanded interval here. So you're seeing there's a common theme. First, we expand the interval. And in the end, we divide by something to get back our original values for theta or x. That's the theme that's going on here. OK, so the cosecant of what angles gives you positive um, 1? Well, as I'm going to recall, 
that the cosecant is reciprocal of the, the sine function. Do you agree? The sine function. Isn't that, uh, isn't that the case here? Right. When would be the only time that this ratio would be equal to one? What would the sign of an angle have to be, ladies and gentlemen, if this ratio here is to be equal to one? What would the sign? The sign would be? also have to be equal to one too. Yeah, it kind of looks like that, right? All right, I mean, I mean, it kind of implies then that the sign of your angle would also have to be equal to one. Okay. So noting that fact, that's gonna help us get started here. So to say the cosecant of some angle three X is equal to positive one, would have to say or imply, ladies and gentlemen, um, this would have to also imply then that the sine of three X would have to be equal to one. Do you agree? Do we all buy that? If the cosecant of 3x is 1, that would imply that the sine of 3x would have to be equal to 1. It would have to be. So by solving this equation is synonymously going to solve this equation. So the sine of what angle gives us 1? Well, you think of your quadrantal angles or the unit circle. We know the sine of which is equal to the y-coordinate of any point around the unit circle. The only point that has a y-coordinate of one would be this point up here, zero, one. And that corresponds with what angle there? That would be 90 degrees. Or ladies and gentlemen, that would be pi half radians, correct? So if three X is equal to pi half radians, then the cosecant of pi half radians would be one. But notice, we can't just stop here. There may be other coterminal solutions to this equation because 3x can spread its wings, ladies and gentlemen. It can lie between zero and six pi. We've only accounted for one possible solution where 3x could be pi halves. Could I go around one time and add pi halves and still be in this interval for 3x? The answer is certainly we can. So 3x could also be equal to 2 pi plus pi halves. What's 2 pi plus pi halves? 2 pi would be 4 pi halves plus pi halves would be 5 pi halves. And notice 5 pi halves lies between 0 and 6 pi. Could we go around twice? and add pi halves and still be in this larger interval here for three X. Kind of looks like we could, so we could go around twice. So around once is two pi, around twice is four, four pi. So four pi plus pi halves would be still coterminal to pi halves and yet would still also lie in this interval. What's four pi plus pi halves? Well, four pi would be eight pi halves. Do you agree another name for four pi is eight pi halves? Plus pi halves would be nine pi halves. Ladies, I'm a nine pi halves is still in this interval here. Could we go around three times and add pi halves and still be in this interval? No. No, three times around would be, think about it, three times around would be there's, there's what? There's two pi, there's four pi, there's six pi, and six pi plus anything, ladies and gentlemen, will exceed this interval. You cannot go around three times and add pi halves and still be in this interval. So we must stop here. But ladies and gentlemen, we're not being asked to solve for three X, we're being asked to solve for X. So if three X is equal to pi halves, this would imply then that X would have to be equal to what? We have to divide both sides of this equation by three to recover X. So therefore X would have to be equal to pi halves divided by three, which is gonna give you pi six for one solution for X. If three X is equal to five pi halves, this would imply then, then, imply then that X would be equal to five pi halves divided by three, which is to say X could be equal to five pi six. There's another solution for X. If X could be equal to nine pi halves, 
This would imply then that X could be equal to nine pi halves divided by three, or X could be equal to nine pi six, or you could even reduce this if you want, or X is equal to three pi halves, do you agree? All right, so the bottom line is what are our solutions to this trig equation here? Cosecant three X equal to one. Well, one solution is what? Pi six for X. Another solution is five pi six. And another solution is nine pi six, or you could have re re reduced that down to three pi halves. These are your solutions to that trigonometric equation. We're done, okay? So those are those answers for number 10. All right, let's see what else. One like number 10, okay, let's see here. Okay, now, <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to jump on down to 13 through 18 here. Now it says find all degree solutions for each of the following. Notice in the past, they were restricting our solutions theta to lie between 0 and 360, or x to lie between 0 and 2 pi. Notice now that restriction has been lifted. And so for problems 13 through 18, ladies and gentlemen, they want all infinite number of degree solutions for these trig equations. So there's an infinite number of solutions to these now, infinite number, which means our solutions are not going to be, um, we're not going to be able to list all the solutions to these equations. We just have to represent all the infinite solutions in general. So we better look at one of these. Remember I said many moons ago that for every angle that exists in the XY plane, there's an infinite number of coterminal angles for any angle. In other words, every angle has an infinite number of coterminal angles. That's always true. All right, so for problem number 14 here, uh, they want us to solve sine of two theta equal to negative square root of three over two. But ladies and gentlemen, they now relax the restriction that theta has to lie between zero and 360. There is no restricted interval for theta. That's why they're saying find all degree solutions for this equation. Well, now how are we gonna do that? Because theta doesn't lie between zero and 360 anymore. So it's not like we double the interval anymore, ladies and gentlemen. We don't double the interval from zero to 360 and call it to you know, say then that two theta lies between zero and 720. There's no restriction for theta. There's no restricted interval for theta. All right. So how are we going to do this, solve for this? Well, ladies and gentlemen, in order to solve this equation for its solutions here, uh, we need to you know, think more generally here. In what quadrants would the sine of an angle be a negative ratio? What quadrants? In what quadrants is this is a sine function negative? Negative ratio. Three and four. All right. So our solutions are going to be third quadrant, fourth quadrant angles here. Can you give me a third quadrant angle whose sine is negative square root of three over two? Now, to answer that question, again, you could use your unit circle, ladies and gentlemen, and you're searching for an ordered pair on that unit circle that has a y coordinate of negative square root of three over two, because the sine of an angle in, in the unit circle is always equal to the y coordinate of the point associated with that angle on the unit circle. So, what angle would this be in the third quadrant here? 240 degrees. 240 degrees. Okay. All right, so do we agree that if two theta is equal to 240 degrees, then the sine of 240 degrees is negative square root of three over two? That's true, correct? But ladies, I'm give me a fourth quadrant angle. 
whose sine is negative square root of three over two, fourth quadrant angle. Again, you can use the unit. 300. Circle. 300 degrees? Okay, 300 degrees. All right. Okay, now here we go now. So ladies and we've identified that our solutions are going to come from the third quadrant and the fourth quadrant for this trig equation. And yet we don't have any restricted interval for theta. Therefore, there's no restricted interval for two theta. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, we need to understand then <clears throat> that if our argument two theta is any angle that is coterminal to 240 degrees, ladies and gentlemen, how do I represent in general any angle that is coterminal to 240 degrees? I know I've shown you this in the past. It involves that integer k. Remember that integer k? How do I represent yeah. all angles? You add uh, 360 degrees times k. Okay, so if two theta, the argument of this trig function is equal to any angle that's coterminal 240 degrees, then that's to say that two theta could be equal to 240 degrees plus 360 degrees times some integer k, where k is an integer. This is a way of representing all angles that are, that are coterminal to 240 degrees. And there's an infinite number of possible angles that are coterminal to 240 because k is an integer. There's an infinite number of integers. k could be negative 3, k could be negative 2, k could be negative 1, k could be 0, k could be 1, k could be 2, k could be 3, et cetera, et cetera. It goes on forever. So these are all the third quadrant angles that are coterminal to 240 degrees that the argument two theta could be equal to if its sign is to be negative square root of three over two. But we have fourth quadrant angle possibilities. If our argument two theta is any angle that's coterminal to 300 degrees, then the sign of that angle would be negative square root of three over two. How do we in general represent all angles coterminal to 300 degrees? We would say that two theta in general could be equal to 300 degrees plus any integral multiple of 360 degrees. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a way of representing all angles that are coterminal to 300 degrees, where k is that some integer, k is some integer. K is some integer. We understand what this K business is all about here, the, the K being an integer. Do we, do we really get that, ladies and gentlemen? For instance, let me, let me go back up in here and use this and show you an example here. If K is equal to zero, if my integer K is zero, then two theta could be equal to 240 degrees plus 360 degrees times zero, which means two theta could be 240 degrees. That certainly makes sense. We know if two theta is 240 degrees, its sine is negative square root of three over two. What if K is equal to the integer one now? Oh, well, two theta then could be equal to 240 degrees plus 360 degrees times one. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that means that I, if I go around one whole time around the unit circle, 360 degrees and add 240 degrees, I'm still coterminal to 240 degrees. So if two theta is equal to 240 plus 360, which would be what? 600 degrees. The sine of, three, the sine of 600 degrees is still negative square root of three over two because 600 degrees is coterminal to 240 degrees. What if K is a negative integer? What if K is negative one? Well, a second quadrant angle that would still be coterminal to 240 degrees would be 240 degrees plus 360 degrees times negative one. Or that's to say 240 degrees minus 360 degrees. And what would this give you here? If you um, do the subtraction here, that'd be negative 120, negative 120 degrees. Ladies and gentlemen, do you agree that negative 120 degrees is coterminal to 240 degrees? Do we buy that? Negative 120 degrees is coterminal to 240 degrees. So the sine of negative 120 degrees is still negative square root of three over two. So you see this K business here? K could be any integer, ladies and gentlemen. 
any integer. It doesn't matter what integer you put in here for K. I guarantee you, when, it, when you multiply the integer, integer by 360 and add 240 to it, you're still gonna be coterminal 240 degrees. Likewise, it doesn't matter what integer you put in here for K. You multiply it by 360, you add 300 degrees to it, it'll still be an angle coterminal to 300 degrees. That's why there's an infinite number of possible angles coterminal to 240 and 300. All right, I just want to you know, expound, expound upon what this K, this integer deal is and how it affords us an infinite number of solutions or angles that are coterminal to the uh, mentioned angle. All right, but ladies and gentlemen, we're not being asked to solve for theta. No, excuse me, two theta. We're not being asked to solve for two theta. We're being asked to solve for theta in the end. So what do I have to do here? If two theta is equal to 240 degrees plus 360 degrees K, then this would imply that what? What do we do to both sides of this equation to solve for theta? We divide both sides of the equation by two. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, if two theta is equal to 240 degrees plus 360 degrees times K, then theta would be 240 divided by two or 120 degrees. Oh, I seen this on one exam that I graded. I did get the chapter four exams graded. Ladies and gentlemen, what's wrong? If I, if I mean for this angle to be degrees, what's wrong with it leaving it like this? What's wrong with it? If this, if That's I'm just intending, a number. What's that? No um, notation, it's just a number. Yeah, look, this is the problem here. This is supposed to be degrees. If you don't literally put that degree symbol attached, you don't attach that degree symbol to this number, technically then it's radians. Be on guard. If you want it to be degree a degree measure, you better explicitly attach that little degree symbol up here. I think only one person failed to do that. I, no, I can't remember the name. And that's not important. But ladies and gentlemen, the important thing is this. If our answer is in degrees, make sure you always attach the degree symbol. Otherwise, it will, by, by default, it'll revert to being or interpreted as radians. 120 radians is a lot different than 120 degrees. All right. 360 degrees uh, divided by 2 would be 180. So 180 degrees times K. So ladies and gentlemen, this is, these are the infinite number of solutions for theta. if two theta is our third quadrant angular solutions, <clears throat> okay? But we said that two theta could be any angle coterminal to 300 degrees. If that's the case, we need to recover theta though. So we need to divide both sides of this equation by two to recover theta. So we divide this by two, divide this by two, divide this by two. So therefore our other infinite number of solutions to this trig equation would say that theta could be equal to 150 degrees plus 180 degrees times K, that integer. Here's your infinite number of solutions for this trigonometric equations, they're boxed in. So any angle that's 120 degrees plus any integral multiple of 180 would be a solution or any angle that's 150 degrees plus any integral multiple of 180 degrees would also be a solution. These are your solutions to that trigonometric equation. So going back to the very beginning, um, would, it, would it matter? What if our quadrant four angle was 330? If it was 330? Yeah. You just have to have an angle within quadrant four, you were saying, or? Well, um, so I'm, I'm not sure what you're, you're saying here. I mean, our solutions, I mean, for the sign of an angle to be a negative ratio, the angles have to come from the third and the fourth quadrant. Isn't that right? Correct? Right. But does it matter if that angle uh, would be 300 or could it be 330? Or... Oh, no, wait a minute. Well, no, no, it matters. The sign of what fourth quadrant angle gives you negative square root of three over two? Do you have your unit circle handy? <coughs> uh, I can I can get it. If you look at that unit circle, okay. Um, the only fourth quadrant angle whose sign is negative square root of three over two 
Or in other words, the only fourth quadrant angle that's associated with the point on the unit circle whose y coordinate is negative square root of three over two, the only angle is 300 degrees. Oh, okay, all right. It's not 330 degrees. The sine of 330 degrees is not equal to this ratio of negative square root of three over two, okay? Okay, yep. It's gotta be 300 degrees or any coterminal angle to 300 degrees. Makes sense, thank you. Okay, that's number 14. All right, let's see here, 10.05. Um, let's see here. All right, now, some of these problems here, ladies and gentlemen, um, might enable us to make use of like an identity uh, in order to facilitate our ability to solve the equation. For instance, if you look at one like number 20 here, they want you to find all solutions where X is restricted between zero and two pi for number 20. And number 20's trig equation comes at us in the form of the sine of two X times the cosine of X plus the cosine of two X times the sine of X better be equal to the ratio of negative one half. So this is the trig equation they want us to solve for. And notice X is again, restricted to lie between zero and two pi radians. All right, now this looks like a real mess on the left side of our equation here. This looks very complicated. But ladies and gentlemen, get back and look at this from a distance to try to see the forest for the trees. Ladies and gentlemen, do you remember an identity that will enable me to condense this entire left-hand side down to one trig function? This whole left side can be condensed down. I'll give you a, I'll give you a hint. It's either, it's either a sum or difference identity for the sine or the cosine function. It goes way back to chapter five. Do we recall... Do we recall, ladies and gentlemen? So we're going to have to recall something here. If you got the sine of some angle A plus some angle B, do you remember how this expands out? It's the sum identity for the sine function. Do you agree this was equal to the sine of A times the cosine of B plus the cosine of A times the sine of angle B? Do we remember that identity? That's the sum identity for the sine function. Do you agree our left side mimics that? Yes. Hence, our angle A, as far as, I, uh, as far as this identity is concerned, our angle A is really 2x. Our angle B is really x. So angle A is 2x, angle B is just x. Hence, this left side can be condensed down into the sine of 2x plus just x. So ladies and gentlemen, this left side collapses down using that identity into the sine of 2x plus x. There you go. But what's 2x plus x? That's just 3x. And look at this. Now we're back to familiar territory. And so for number 20, utilizing the sum identity for the sine function, the left side vastly simplifies down to the sine of 3x. And now we're in business. And now you can go from here. Okay, so now you can go from here in solving this trig equation because you know if x lies between 0 and 2 pi, 3x will lie between the, x, the values of 0 and 6 pi. Do you agree? Correct. And then you can go from there to recover your solutions. All right. Now, unfortunately, um, I don't have time to finish this whole problem. But the key here with number 20, ladies and gentlemen, is do we understand that to make our life a million times easier, we, we tapped into what? This identity, the sum identity for the sine function. And that brings our equation down to one that I've already kind of showed you how to do. Okay. I already showed you one of this caliber. 
earlier. Okay, so you'll go from there. Alrighty. Okay, the reason why I don't really want to go through that entire solution is because there's a bigger fish to fry here. And um, the one I want to show you The one I really need to show you, if nothing else, is I need to show you one like 36 or 38. 36 or 38. I'm going to show you problem 38 <clears throat> way down here at the bottom. 38. This dredges up something else that was of extreme importance when solving radical equations back in algebra. that we have to bring to the forefront in this problem. All right, so they want us to solve this trig equation, cosine theta minus the sine of theta is equal to negative one. And notice theta is restricted to lie between zero and 360. Well, Liz, I'm gonna, how are we, uh, you know, how are we gonna solve this thing here? I mean, because right now, I mean, we don't really know what we can do with this. And you know, we can't really utilize any identities we've learned in the past because in order to use like a Pythagorean identity, uh, one end or both of these would have to be squared. This is a big problem. This actually goes back to a problem I worked out yesterday, a trick we learned. What would I do to both sides of this equation, ladies and gentlemen, in order to obtain sine squared and or cosine squared? Here's your hint. Let's square both sides of this equation here. This is a trick that we've seen yesterday on one problem. But if you square the left side, you must square the right side. Then we have to foil this out. And later on, when you take cosine theta minus sine theta and you multiply it by itself, I'm going to um, basically skirt around the details because we're running out of time. Anyways, this would, when you foil it out, it'd be cosine squared theta minus two sine theta cosine theta plus sine squared theta equal to positive one now on the right side. Can we further simplify this? Well, if we combine cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, we know by the Pythagorean identity that's equal to one. So cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is one. So our equation collapses down to this now. All right. Blaise Amon, how do we solve this? Well, let's subtract one from both sides. Doing that, the ones drop on the left and the right. And we're left with this. If I was to multiply through by a negative sign to clear this leading negative sign out here, I would then have this. Notice if you multiply the right side by negative one, it's still zero. But ladies and gentlemen, doesn't this ring a bell with one of our identities? Anybody recognize this? <coughs> I know we've seen this before. What identity is this? What can I replace this with according to an identity we learned in the past? I'll give you a hint. Two A. That's right. It's the double angle identity for the sine. So therefore, this can be replaced with the sine of two theta. Double angle identity for a sine function. Okay. Well, now we got it down to a very familiar trig equation here. We're used to dealing with this. So if theta lies between zero and three hundred and sixty, then two theta, the argument of the sine function, lies on the expanded interval from zero to seven hundred and twenty degrees. So the sine of what angles, ladies and gentlemen, gives you zero. The sine of what angle gives you zero? You can use your unit circle. Look around your unit circle for an ordered pair that has a y coordinate of zero. And what angle does that correspond to? Uh, 180, 360. Exactly. There's two possibilities. 
there's uh, 360 degrees, or is uh, what would be code the smaller angle that's coterminal to 360? Just zero degrees? Zero. Zero degrees and what? 180 degrees, correct? So look at if our argument two theta is equal to zero degrees, or if our argument two theta is equal to 180 degrees, or any coterminal angles thereof, then the sine of that angle would be equal to zero. But remember, ladies and gentlemen, two theta now is restricted to this larger expanded interval, zero to 720. So look at how many angles are coterminal to zero degrees and yet still lie in this interval from zero to 720. Well, zero degrees, we could go around one whole time and add zero degrees to that and get another angle that's coterminal to zero degrees, 360, 360 still being, this, being in this interval. Could we go around twice and add zero degrees? In other words, if we go around twice, that would be 720 degrees plus zero degrees. 720 degrees is coterminal to zero degrees. And does 720 degrees lie in this interval? The answer is yes, it does, but that's the last value. You could not go around three times and add zero degrees and still be in this interval. So we must stop here for this one. All right, how about for the fact that two theta, if it's equal to 180 degrees or any, any coterminal angle to 180 degrees, how many angles are coterminal to 180 degrees that lie in this interval? Well, 180 degrees, we could go around once, which is 360 degrees plus 180 degrees. That would net us um, 540 degrees, I believe. But 540 degrees is still in this interval, zero to 720. Could I go around twice? 360 plus another 360 is 720. 720 plus 180. Although it's coterminal to 180 degrees, 720 degrees plus 180 would not be in this interval. So we cannot go around twice and add 180 degrees and still be in this interval. So we must stop here uh, for these angles. So ladies, and we're ready to wrap this up now. So what would be our solutions? If two theta is equal to zero, then this would imply then that theta would be equal to zero degrees divided by two or zero degrees. There's one solution, zero degrees. If two theta is equal to 360 degrees, that would imply that theta could be equal to what? 360 degrees divided by two, 480 degrees. That's another solution, 180 degrees. Or if two theta is equal to 720 degrees, that would imply that theta could be equal to what? 720 divided by two, which is to say 360 degrees is another solution. Or if two theta is equal to 180 degrees, that would imply that another solution for theta would be 180 divided by two, which would be 90 degrees. Or if two theta is 540 degrees, this would imply that theta would be equal to 540 degrees divided by two, or 270 degrees. So what's all of our solutions here? Theta could be equal to what? Zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 360 degrees, 270 degrees, or 540 degrees. Okay, but ladies and gentlemen, this is the punchline for this problem. That's why I chose to do number 38. We got to be careful. I claim that not all of these angles will actually satisfy the original equation. Some of these solutions are called extraneous solutions and will have to be discarded. You got to throw them out. They're not all going to work. Why is that? Well, this a golden example illustra illustrates why we're gonna to have to discard some solutions is, do you remember when you were solving radical equations? Ladies and gentlemen, let's go back to algebra for a moment here. If you have the square root of X is equal to negative two, how would you solve this radical equation for X? How do you get rid of a square root? You square both sides, correct? 
So it looks like the solution to this equation would be four. But ladies and gentlemen, does four check out in the original equation? If you check your answer here, the square root of four, is the square root of four equal to negative two? Doesn't work, doesn't check out. We gotta be careful. Whenever you're solving an equation and you square both sides of an equation, ladies and gentlemen, you need to check your final solutions back into the original equation and make sure that they work because you could be generating by squaring both sides, you could be generating what are called extraneous solutions. So you need to check these out. In other words, if you take zero degrees and put it back in here and here, what's the cosine of zero degrees? Is the cosine of zero degrees minus the sine of zero degrees, is that equal to negative one? The cosine of zero degrees is one. The sine of zero degrees is zero. Is one minus zero equal to negative one? Doesn't work. For that reason, ladies and gentlemen, we gotta throw out zero degrees. Zero degrees is not a solution to our original equation. How about 90 degrees? You replace theta with 90 degrees here and here. Is the equation satisfied? If theta is equal to 90 degrees, we would have the cosine of 90 degrees minus the sine of 90 degrees. Does that equal negative one? Cosine of 90 degrees is zero. The sine of 90 degrees is one. The opposite of one is negative one. It looks like it checks out. So 90 degrees survives as a solution. How about 180 degrees? Cosine, cosine of 180 degrees, ladies and gentlemen, is negative one. The sine of 180 degrees is zero. Negative one minus zero. Is it negative one? Yes. 180 degrees survives. 360 degrees. Replace theta with 360. The cosine of 360 is one. Minus the sine of 360 is zero. One minus zero. Is that negative one? Is one minus zero negative one? No. No good. Must toss out 360 degrees. Does 270 degrees work? The cosine of 270 is zero. The sine of 270 degrees is negative one. Is the is zero subtract a negative one? Is zero subtract a negative one, negative one? No. 270 degrees fails to be a solution. It does not check with the original equation. 540 degrees. The cosine of 540 degrees. How did I get 540 degrees? I went around one whole time, do you agree? And then added 180 degrees. So 540 degrees is coterminal to 180 degrees. The cosine of 540 degrees therefore is negative one. The sine of 540 degrees is zero. Is negative one minus zero equal to negative one? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, your only solutions to this trigonometric equation are 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and 540 degrees. The other ones had to be discarded. Does that make sense? Why we, have to, we had to discard them? Because they do not check back at the original problem. You always have to be on guard when you square both sides of an equation. You could be generating false solutions. And this is a cold, golden example with a radical equation that illustrates you know, uh, how that happens by squaring both sides. All right. All right. I went way over with my time. So um, what I will do is, uh, let's see. This is your classwork for today. Ladies and what I'm going to do is um, I'll let you just jot these down. You can work them out and I'll work them out and I will send um, the solution. I'll email the solution to all of you so you can look at it. But I want you to find all solutions uh, for theta, 0 to 360, such as the cosine of 3 theta is negative 1. Find all solutions for the sine of 10. This is 10 times theta. 10 times theta is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. All right. I wore out my welcome big time. Um, I will work these out, email the solutions to you, but I'm going to do that later on tonight because uh, I want you to try to run these through your mind and try to do something with them on your own, okay? All right, so that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I'll make the chapter six quiz available. It'll be due by uh, Saturday, midnight, Saturday night. So Saturday night, 11.59 p.m., okay? You guys have a great weekend, safe weekend. Mr. O. Yeah. 
did I hear we're, we're not having a chapter five test? You're just going into the chapter six quiz, right? Wait a minute here. No, 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 no. We do have a chapter five and six exam. Okay. I see. I see. I see. Yeah. Uh, Finding a that's next week. Okay. Okay. And then I was wondering, my printer broke last night. Uh -huh. So out the quiz. So I just wrote everything in my notebook. Do you want me to push, paste it, like redo it onto the quiz or? No, 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 no. You don't need to do that. Just make sure you label clearly the top of your paper, the assignment. So I know what assignment it is. It would be also helpful if you box in or circle your answers. Okay. That'd be great. I'm on all of them. Yes. Thank you, Mr. O. No, I hope you have a, good have a good one. Bye. <clears throat>